Hey guys, this is Hero Flamingo, and welcome to my Guild Wars 2 class guide for the Engineer. In this video, I'm going to be looking at all of the weapons that the Engineer can use, as well as all of the individual weapon skills. We'll then be looking at all the healing, utility, and elite skills that the Engineer has at his disposal. And I'll then be looking at the um, profession mechanics for the Engineer, and then I'll be going into each individual core specialization, looking at each individual trait, and seeing how that can make your Engineer even more powerful. So if you're interested in playing as an engineer, or if you already do and you want to know more, strap in and we'll get started right now. Alright, so before we go into the detail, I just wanted to give you a quick profession overview for the engineer. So the engineer is one of Guild Wars 2's adventurer professions, and therefore uses medium armour. Engineers are masters of mechanical mayhem. They love to tinker with explosives, elixirs, and all manner of hazardous gadgets. They support their allies with alchemic weaponry, deploy ingenious inventions or lay waste to foes with a wide array of mines, bombs and grenades. As you can tell by that description, they're a pretty unique class in Guild Wars 2. They focus on um, ranged weaponry, mainly guns, so pistols and rifles. And you can also lay down turrets, which you know, you can have rocket turrets, machine gun turrets and all sorts of stuff like that, mixed with mines, flamethrowers and all sorts of stuff. So there's lots of really cool things to have a look at on this class. So um, the first thing I want to have a look at is weapon skills. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at was the engineer's weapon skills. So I have here all of the weapons that the engineer can use. The engineer is one of only two professions in Guild Wars 2 that's limited to one weapon set in combat. So although you can set up two weapon sets and switch between them, you can't do it in combat, which means that you only get five weapon skills instead of ten that you'd normally have. So obviously there's only the rifle, the pistols and the shield to choose from. So I'm going to go through them one by one, equip them and then have a look at what skills you get and show a demonstration. Don't worry too much about the lack of weapons on here because when I get into utility skills you'll see there's a lot of unique ones where you can put engineering kits on like flamethrowers and stuff like that which give you a whole new set of weapon skills. So that's the reason why they're quite limited here. So the first one I want to look at here is the two hand rifle. So this is a two handed ranged weapon so I'm going to have a look at the, uh, the skills that we've got here. Uh, see what they do and then demonstrate them. So your uh, first weapon skill with the rifle is hip shot. So this is deliver a quick rifle shot from the hip that pierces targets. So you can see it pierces there and does damage and it's at a range of 1200 so you can do it from really far away. So let's try this out. There you go. So that's your basic auto skill there so you just keep doing that. As you can see there's a decent amount of damage there. Um, and that would be your number one ability. So your number two ability is Net Shot. So this is a 10 second cooldown and it immobilizes foes with a Net Shot. So this is going to be range 1200 again but it's going to have a core effect so it's going to immobilize enemies um, and make them unable to move for two seconds. So let's give that a little go. There you go, see it throws a net out, they've got immobilized on them so while they're doing that they can't move uh, so it means that you can stand back and just you know, continue shooting them, use all your other skills. So that's a pretty cool one that you can integrate there. So your uh, number three ability is Blunderbuss. So this um, takes half a second to cast and has a 12 second cooldown. It's fire several shards of shrapnel that inflict more damage the closer you are to foes. So this one's interesting. So this one you actually want to be closer to enemies to do more damage. So as you can see it's range 900 so it's pretty long range and it can hit up to five targets but obviously like we said you do want to be closer, so it's got a minimum and a maximum damage there, as well as the, the minimum and maximum bleeding. So let's try it from relatively close. So you don't have to go right up to them, but the closer you are, the more damage it's going to do. So it's quite a good one to use if the enemies come close to you. You can use your number three ability. Boom! There you go. As you can see, decent amount of damage. Put bleeding on the enemies, so it's going to do damage over time. But that will hit all enemies in that area. So if you've got a bunch of enemies all bunched up, you can run up to them, use your number three, and you're going to like shoot shrapnel at them effectively and um, and cause bleeding on all of them. So that's pretty cool. Your number four ability here is Overcharged Shot. So this has a 15 second cooldown. It says, fire a blast so strong it launches your foe as you fall backward and remove movement impairing conditions. All right, so it removes movement comparing conditions from you, so it can see that get rid of cripple, mobilize, shield. So it does some damage. It launches the um, enemy back and also l knocks you back as well. So it's pretty good if you want to gain some distance between you and the enemy. It can be done for 1200 range, but also obviously closer if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to move them back. So let's see, they're coming towards me here. I can knock them back. 
Boom. There you go. As you can see, that knocks them over there. Knocks me back. So it stops them from doing their anything. It's obviously going to interrupt them as well. And if I've got any movement appearing abilities on me, it's going to get rid of those as well. So that's pretty cool. Your fifth and final weapon for the... Uh, sorry, your fifth and final weapon skill for the rifle is Jump Shot. So this has a 20 second cooldown. This is blast the ground, damaging nearby foes and leaping to your target. This is ground targeted ability so that you can use this to jump onto an enemy. Uh, so you're going to jump onto them and, and do landing damage to up to 5 enemies within a 240 radius. So you can do it from 800 range from relatively far away and as you can see it also sticks vulnerability on the enemy as well. So let's demonstrate this here on uh, this guy here. So obviously you can do it from quite far away and it's going to damage all enemies within this radius. So I'm going to shoot, gonna launch and bam, land down. Vulnerability on the enemy does damage. It's pretty good. Then um, you can then you know do a bunch of weapon skills. Maybe use utilities, whack out flamethrower or something like that to do some extra damage while they've got vulnerability on them. But that's a cool set of skills there. All right. So the next weapon we're going to have a look at is the main hand pistol. So I've got that on now, and obviously that's my first three weapon abilities here. So let's have a look. So our first weapon ability with the pistol is fragmentation shot. This is fire a shot that bleeds the impacted target and then shatters, dealing damage to nearby enemies. So you can hit up to five enemies, so you're going to hit the target and then it's going to shatter and um, so it's going to cause them to bleed and then shatter and deal damage to nearby enemies. So if I give that a go on this guy here, um, here you go, you can see it sort of does a little explosion there. So nearby enemies will be getting damage, you see it hit him as well, make him bleed. You see him stacking bleeding up on him there as well, which is really cool. So that's going to, as you see, even when I stop shooting him, look at that, big stacks of damage there. So that can be a really cool first ability there, so I like that. Your number two on the pistol is Poison Dart Volley. So this takes a second and three quarters to cast, um, and it's got an eight second cooldown. So fire a volley of darts to poison foes. So it can be done for 900 range, so it's pretty long range, and it, you can see... Uh, you're going to hit it multiple times and it's going to put big stacks of poison on them as well. Which is going to do damage and reduce their heal effectiveness. So let's try it out here. So, boom, 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 boom. As you can see, it channels that, shoots that, and then look, poison. There you go. And it finished him off and now he's dead. So that's pretty cool there. So as you see, the first one there is bleeding, the second one's poison. So it's pretty cool for condition damage uh, with this weapon. And let's have a look with your third one. See, it's also got some conditions as well. So your third one is static shot. And this has got a 12 second cooldown. This is discharge a lightning shot that bounces between multiple foes, blinding and confusing them. So it's going to bounce between multiple foes in the area. It's obviously got some initial damage and then it blinds them. So their next outgoing attack misses, puts confusion on them, which does damage. Um, and obviously causes damage upon them when they use their next skill, which is cool. It can bounce up to four times from a range of 900. So let's give that a go. So we'll wait for this guy to come back round and see if we can hit a couple of them at the same time with a little bit of a bounce. So I'm going to target this guy. I'm going to use that number three. Cool. There you go. Oh look, that's actually... I didn't realise that it's hit all of them, putting the effects on all of them as you can see. Uh, so I didn't realise it had that big of an effect. See, all the people in that area, all four of them bounced between them using my four bounces. Sticking the conditions on them and doing a decent amount of damage as well. So those are some really cool abilities there, which you can obviously partner with some offhands, which we'll have a look at now. All right, so now we've got the offhand pistol equipped. So we'll look at the four and five skills. Obviously, it can be, be partnered with the main hand pistol. But I just wanted to show them off separately. So your first ability on the offhand here is blowtorch. So this has a 15 second cooldown. It says unleash flames from your pistol to burn foes deals more damage the closer you are. So this is another one of those ones that you actually want to be relatively close. It's only a mid-range ability, so it's 600 range. It can hit up to three enemies, and as you can see there, um, it does more damage and more burning the closer you are. So let's demonstrate this here on these guys. Look. There you go. So you can see it shoots like a little flamethrower there, puts burning on them, which, look, it does a good amount of damage. It lasts for quite a long time. See that? It's a lot of damage just for that one skill. Bear in mind that's going to hit up to three targets as well, so you would be doing that damage on three targets. I was pretty close there, so that's going to be sort of maximum damage, so if I'm sort of further away like here, it's not going to do as much damage, but it's still pretty effective. So our second ability here on the offhand pistol is Glue Shot. So this has a 20 second cooldown. This is coat the target area with a glue puddle that immobilizes foes on impact, then cripple foes that remain within. 
So it's like a ground target ability you can do from relatively long range with a 240 radius. So it lasts for 5 seconds and it's going to immobilize enemies and cripple them as well. So it's basically you put this down on the floor and it's going to um, stick them in place, all of the enemies in that area. So if you're you know, attacking from range, you've got a group of enemies, you want to stop them coming towards you. You'll do this. Splat. There you go. Look, that shows it on both of them there. Both got cripple on them, which is going to slow them down. So it immobilizes people initially and then anyone that enters the area will also be... Um, slowed down as well so you could put it here and as enemies run through it towards you they'll be slowed down so you can unleash all of your range skills before they reach you so that's a good other couple of abilities there all right so the final weapon i wanted to show you was the offhand shield so this is obviously our four and five abilities and we can stick this with the main hand pistol if you want a more defensive build so let's have a look so your first skill here is magnetic shield it's got 25 second cooldown and a three second cast Create a magnetic field that reflects projectiles and can be released to knock back foes. Uh, so you can see, so if you're during the three seconds, if instead of letting it play out, you can activate it. So you can activate that second ability there, magnetic inversion, which releases the magnetic field to knock back enemies. So the first one is just a shield that reflects, and if you want to utilize it fully, you can also knock back enemies. As you can see uh, it can knock back up to five enemies with a radius of 240 around you and does a little bit of damage. So let's demonstrate that. So initially I'll press it, it does my shield, and then if I want I can press it again, release that, and knock back all enemies around me there. So it's a pretty cool uh, defensive ability there, so it blocks attacks and then you can also activate it to, to knock back any enemies around you and then use your other range skills, so that's pretty cool. And your, your second ability here on the shield is Static Shield. So this cast time is 2.5 seconds and it's got a 30 second cooldown. So this is electrify your shield, preparing to throw it at foes. Stun nearby enemies that attack you while blocking. All right, so you're going to block, has a block duration of two and a half seconds and then stun for one second. So stun the enemies that attack you while you're blocking. So basically it creates like an electrified shield. So you're gonna be blocking all the attacks. And then it also, you know, stuns enemies if they attack you. So that's pretty cool. So I'm not really gonna be able to demonstrate that because these guys don't attack you, but just to show you what it looks like. There you go, radius around you there. Anyone attacks you there, they're going to get stunned. And you're also going to block their attack, so you're not going to be taking any damage. That's really cool. So that's all of the weapon skills. So the next thing I want to have a look at is the engineer's healing skills. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is the engineer's healing skills. So as you can see, we've got four to choose from here. And this is our, look at, our first look at an elixir ability. So one thing I want to quickly clarify is that for each of these six, seven, eight, nine, and 0 abilities here that you choose, uh, it will uh, it will add a gadget to your tool belt here, which is your F1 to F5. I'll go into that in more detail uh, when I talk about the profession mechanics in a little bit. But you know, just so I can show you as I'm going through it, as I demonstrate the skill, I'll also demonstrate the gadget ability that goes with it, because every skill has its own unique um, ability here as well. So, looking at the healing skills, your first one is Elixir H. So this is got a 25 second cooldown and it's drink elixir H to heal yourself and gain protection, regeneration and swiftness. So as you can see this is a pretty basic um, healing skill but you know really cool so it's got a big base heal along with sticking protection, regen and swiftness on you as well so it buffs you as well as healing you. So it's a pretty perfect um, uh, decent healing skill there so let's just demonstrate that. Uh, there you go, so obviously you stick that on yourself and you see the buffs you put on as well as your healing as well. And just to have a little look, the uh, gadget that comes with it is Toss Elixir H, which also has a 25 second cooldown. So Toss Elixir H to grant protection, regen and vigor to allies. So obviously you can stick this down the radius, ground target ability, throw that, bomb, and that's going to stick these, on, uh, these buffs on you and allies in the area. Completely uh, separate 25 second cooldown, so you can use it set completely separate from your healing skill here, so don't worry about that. Okay, so your next healing skill is medkit. Alright, so this is our first look at an engineering kit. So this completely replaces your skills. So, equip a kit that replaces your weapon with healing skills. Uh, and then you press it again to stow it away. So if I click that you see that's going to whack out my medkit so now it's replaced my first five skills so it, there's a few of these in the utilities as well uh, which we'll be able to look at but effectively this is why you don't have many weapons to choose from because there's lots of things like this which replace all of your skills 
So let's have a look at these one by one. So your first one is Med Blaster. This is restore health to allies with several pulses of healing energy. Heals more for each boon on the ally. So let's have a look at what that looks like then. So you're going to shoot that out there and that's going to heal allies in that area. Your second one is Bandage Blast. So fire several bandages ahead of you to heal allies. Let's have a look at that. Bam, there you go. So that shoots some bandages down and uh, allies that pick those up will be healed as well. So all of these are going to be based around healing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, your number three is Cleansing Field. So release purifying vapors to cleanse conditions from allies near you at each interval. So conditions removed per pulse pulses, duration, so you can read all of that. I don't want to spend too much time going into all of these because I'll buy a beer all day. So there you go, that's obviously got an area around you, radius of 300. It's going to cleanse conditions from allies. So your number four is Vital Burst. So this is a 20 second cooldown. It's unleash a cascade of concentrated healing vapors around you. So the radius of 300 around you is going to heal up to five allied targets. There you go. And your fifth and final uh, uh, skill here is infusion bomb so throw a bomb that grants boons to nearby allies when it explodes so obviously ground targeted big area here so throw it on you and your allies and bam there you go it's going to explode and put a bunch of uh, nice buffs there on you and your allies and then when you want to put it away press your number six again and you've stowed away your med kit there and just to show you um, there's also an extra little thing here in your gadget bar this is bandage your wounds and heal yourself so this has actually got a really big heal on it, so don't, you know, forget about this ability here. I think this is because, obviously, you need an initial heal. So if you're dying in combat, it might be to whack out the engineering kit and use all those skills. It's going to be quite time consuming. So you can always whack your F1, and then bam, that's going to be a, a big self-heal there. So that's really cool. So the next healing skill here is a gadget skill. This is called AED. So it's got a 30 second cooldown and it says activate your AED, enabling the system to heal you after a brief period of time. If you take lethal damage while AED is active, it ends and heals you for a large amount and removes conditions. Alright, so healing when lethal damage is taken, you see it's 12,000, is a massive heal there. And by lethal damage, really that's damage that, that would have killed you. So if they do that in that amount of time, as you can see it lasts for 5 seconds. So if, you, if you're about to die, you might want to use this and you'll get an even bigger heal. So heals when the timer expires, which is the smaller heal. If lethal damage is taken, the damage is negated and you are healed for a large amount and conditions are removed, so it removes all those conditions. So that could be quite a good one, you know, if you're going to be in combat, because, uh, you know, it's still going to give you a base heal after five seconds, but if you do die before the heal comes in, it's even better because effectively you're going to get an even bigger heal, so it's sort of a win-win. So that's a pretty cool ability there, so let's just try that out. Boom, there you go. So you're going to see it's going to last for five seconds and then it's going to give you your heal there and obviously it'll be an even bigger heal like I said if you took lethal damage in the process just a quick look at the F1 here so static shock so use your AED to stun an enemy so it does a bit of damage and stuns for two seconds with a range of F1 so uh, I have to target an enemy here so if I just click on this guy boom there you go uh, stun an enemy that didn't seem to work but fair enough try that out I'm sure it does maybe I wasn't Oh, sorry, it's range 180, so it needs to be done from really close range. Uh, so I was a little bit too far away there, so you have to go right up to him. So that's quite good to use if someone comes right up to you and you can just zap them. Uh, so, you know, that's a pretty cool ability there. And here we've got the final healing ability. And this is our first look at a turret ability. So these are really cool. This is actually putting a turret down on the floor. So I'll show that to you now. So this is healing turret. So, deploy a turret that heals you briefly, then regenerates you and your allies. This turret overcharges when it is first placed. So it gives you a nice big self-heal and then sticks regen on you and allied targets. And a radius of 480, so you can, at any point, um, press the ability again to detonate the healing turret. And detonating the healing turret basically explodes it and it does a big... Um, damage to enemies as well so that's pretty cool so you can maybe use that as a finisher when you don't need it anymore and you see you've got overcharge your healing turret to cure conditions and grant a burst of healing and it says um, this turret automatically overcharges when you place it down so when you place it down it's going to have that cleansing burst effect which is going to be a big heal regen conditions removed allies within a pretty big radius of 480 there so that's pretty cool 
So just to quickly sh tell you, turrets are obviously immobile things that you can place down. So you want to, you know, you want to place it down at the start of the fight. Uh, it's going to heal you and allies. As it said when you put it down, putting buffs on you. As you can see, everyone in this area, and that's just going to sit there um, doing that. So either when you're moving on, you don't need it anymore. You can press this again to detonate it. Or obviously, if an enemy is near it and you're near the end of combat, you can maybe finish it off. So if I press my number six, boom, it's going to explode and do a decent amount of damage to enemies around it. So obviously, keep you can keep that going, and that's going to put regen on you and your allies as you go along. Um, so that's pretty cool there. And obviously, when I get into utilities, I'll be showing you all the really cool offensive turrets that you've got as well. So speaking of that, that is all of the healing skills there. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is go into the engineer's utility skills. Alright, so the next thing I want to look at is the Engineer's Utility Skills. This section might take a little bit of time because some of these Engineering Kit Abilities have five whole weapon skills to look at. And I'll try and get through those as quick as I can, but I still want to show you all of the skills so you can properly put your build together. So obviously, as usual, we've got all these skills here, uh, and I'll start with the first three and make, make my way through. So let's choose these three here. Alright, so these are all gadget abilities, so let's just show these off now, and I'll try and remember to show you each of these abilities as well. I don't think I showed you the regen mist on the healing turret, so if you're interested, we'll release a mist of healing liquid to regenerate nearby allies, so I didn't show that in the healing section, but alright, moving on. So, we've got our first three utilities here, and our first one is utility goggles. It's got a 30 second cooldown, and it's break out of stun, gaining resistance, and clearing blindness. So as you can see, it removes conditions, breaks stun. Um, conditions currently on you are ineffective because that's what resistance does. So that's a pretty cool buff there for you. Uh, so use that. As you can see, has a little animation there. It has the effect we discussed. So the uh, F2 ability for this, so the uh, tool toolkit ability is detection pulse. So remove stealth from enemies in a large area. So boom. There you go, so you're going to uh, reveal any hidden enemies in that area. So you've got to bear in mind with all of these utility skills, you kind of get two skills because you've got to look at the toolkit skill as well. So it's pretty cool, but also it does add a whole element of, of extra skills you need to learn. So it can make the engineer maybe a little bit more complicated to learn. So your the next uh, utility skill we've got here is Rocket Boots. So fly forward, removing movement impairing conditions and damaging foes with your Rocket Exhaust. So this is going to damage enemies, um, you're going to fly forwards and you're going to remove all these movement impairing effects of yourself. It's got two counts there, so it's like an ammo skill, so let's just have a look at this, boom. There you go, so I'm going to roll forward and we're going to damage enemies. So if I want to get away from enemies, I can just use this, boom, as you can see, damage the enemy and I'm rolled away and I can turn around and maybe use a bunch of ranged abilities there. So that's pretty cool. The next utility skill is Personal Battering Ram. So launch a target foe with a concealed round head. So, there you go, we're going to launch enemies back, it's got uh, two counts as well, so we can use that a couple of times and it will recharge, uh, and it takes 30 seconds for the count to recharge. So let's try this out here. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty cool actually. Uh, so as you can see, it, it did a big battering round, so let's just look at that one more time from this angle. Boom! <laughs> Literally a ram. Uh, that battering ram, so that's pretty cool, and that knocks the enemies back there, so that'd be a pretty cool ability to use. Let me just show you these last two um, uh, um, toolkit abilities I didn't show you as well. The uh, rocket boots comes with rocket kick, which is usually rocket boots to do an explosive kick that burns foes. So that looks like this. Boom, there you go. Sets them on fire. And then your uh, personal battering ram came with launch personal battering ram, which is shoot a ram's head in front of you, impairing any struck foes. Let's have a little look at that. Bomb. There you go, it's a similar, uh, and you see that's going to be crippling the enemies as well, Just so just another added effect there. Alright, so I've just got the next utility skills here, so I've got a gadget and I've also got a couple of engineering kits to look at, so I'll be showing you those as well. So the first one we've got here is Slick Shoes. It's got a 40 second cooldown, and it's spray oil behind you, knocking down foes. If underwater, foes entering the field are blinded and slowed. So we're going to spray oil uh, and knock down foes. Obviously it's got an extra effect of underwater, but we're not going to demonstrate that. So number of foes here, knock down two seconds. So spray it behind you. So see how this actually works. Alright. 
Okay, so spray oil behind you there. So it's going to affect enemies that are, that are behind you. And obviously, it's going to be better if you're on the water as well, because it's going to create a field for them to go down. So it's going to knock down enemies um, as well. Uh, just having a quick look at the uh, toolkit ability you get with it, super speed. So activate your slick shoes, enabling you to move at superior speeds. So as you can see, whoop, advance your swiftness for a few seconds there, which is really cool. Nice. Okay, uh, so the next one we've got is flamethrower. So this is your first engineering kit here. So arm yourself with a flamethrower that replaces your weapon skills. So, bam, there you go. So we've got five new weapon skills here, and this is a really cool one as well. Who doesn't want to use a flamethrower? So I'll try and get through these as quick as possible. Your number one ability, flame jet. So spray fire in a cone pattern while moving. Burning foes on the final attack. Deal 10% bonus damage to burning targets. So let's have a little look at that. So literally, we can move around, stick and burning on the enemy, doing more damage when they're burning. So look at that, that's high damage as well. That's really cool. That's just the number one ability. Alright, so number two, Flame Blast. So fire a napalm ball that rolls through foes and explodes. This is ground targeted here, and we can do it from mid-range. So it's not too long, uh, far range, so you want to get reasonably close to use the flamethrower. So we're going to shoot a projectile, which is going to you know, explode and, and burn a bunch of enemies. So let's just try this out on this guy. Boom, there you go. So it shoots towards him when it hits him. There you go, puts a big amount of burn in there, does a nice amount of damage as well. Oh Christ, didn't mean to do that, but happy accident. Okay, so your number three, uh, three ability here is Air Blast. So push back foes and projectiles with a hot air blast. Burning foes that are already on fire. So obviously, you know, if you're already using your other abilities, they're all going to be setting them alight. So this is going to push them back. Um, and if they're on fire, it's going to burn them as well. So if I use my number one... So set them on fire, and then my number three is going to put even more fire on them and knock them back, as you saw there. So that can all be sort of put together to do it, and there you go, a bit of damage over time, killed them anyway. So your fourth ability is Napalm. So it's got a 25 second cooldown, and this is burn foes with a wall of Napalm at the target location. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, it creates a little wall there. There you go, so that's going to burn enemies that it lands on and obviously try to go through it. Doing stacks of burn as you can see doing a lot of damage there. So it lasts for 8 seconds, so that's a really cool ability there. If you want to maybe like, you can place that down, shoot your flamethrower over the wall, and obviously if they try and come towards you through it, so if you use it on a melee enemy, they try and come across, they're going to set themselves on fire even more. So you should be, you'd just be chucking stacks of burn on people with this build, which is really cool. So your number 5 ability here is Smoke Vent. So vent smoke from your flamethrower blinding nearby foes. It's got a 15 second cooldown and you're going to basically blind up to 5 enemies in a 180 radius. So you need to be pretty close and then you're going to use that and that's going to stick blinding on the enemies like that. So that's pretty cool. So that is uh, your flamethrower so you can put that away by clicking on that. And you can, like you see, it's literally got no cooldown so you can whack it out again at any time. So it's just like having another weapon set which like I said that's why you can't weapon swap in combat otherwise it'd just be a bit too ridiculous. And then your um, your ability for that, so on top of those five abilities, you also get a toolkit ability as well. Incendiary ammo, burn foes with your next three attacks. So you'd use that, and then when I attack the enemy, it's just going to put even more stacks of burning. You see, it lasts for about 40 seconds there, and you'll, you'll burn enemies with your next few attacks. So that's really cool. So your next utility skill uh, is Elixir Gun. This is another engineering kit, so arm yourself with an Elixir Gun that replaces your weapon skills. So here we go again. Press that. Another whole set of skills. So that's really awesome. Let's try and get through these. So you've got... Sorry, your number one is Tranquilizer Dart. So fire a dart that bleeds and weakens foes. So this is a bit more of a, a ranged weapon here, so I can do it from a bit further away. So as you can see that, I stick in bleeding and weakness on the enemies there. So that's really cool. Your number two ability there is Glob Shot. So fire a bouncing glob that cripples foes and grants swiftness to you and your allies. Boom, there you go. That's bouncing between them. Crippling foes. And it will grant swiftness to your allies as well. Okay, your number three is Fumigate. So this is mid-range ability. And it's spray a cone of elixir fumes. Inflicting poison and vulnerability to foes. And curing conditions on allies with every strike. So you're curing conditions on allies, but also, as you can see, poison and vulnerability, so they're going to take damage over time, and then they're going to take even more damage from your attacks. 
So that's really cool. And then your number four here is Acid Bomb. So this is an elixir skill as part of your engineering kit skill. So it all links in here. Leap backward, spraying an acidic elixir on the ground that damages nearby foes. So if someone comes up close to you and you want to get away from them, bomb. There you go. You've leaped away quite far there and you're sticking some conditions on them and it's damaging them as well. So another really cool ability. And then your final one on this one is Super Elixir. So launch an elixir orb, healing allies on impact and create an area of continual healing. So let's try this out. There you go. Heal, it will heal allies when it hits them and it's going to create an area so it's going to be healing your, um, your allies as long as they stand within this radius. So that's pretty cool there as well. So if I press that again I'm going to put that elixir gun away and I can get it out any time. And then obviously I've got a, um, a toolkit ability with it as well and that's healing mist. So vent a healing mist, granting regeneration to your allies. That's, yeah, regenerate mist is really close to that one. So one push, there you go. So that's going to be healing your allies as well. So that's really cool. Okay, so I've got a few more um, utility skills here. So we've got another engineering kit here. So there's going to be a few more extra skills to look at. So this is toolkit. So it's equipped a kit that gives you a variety of tools. So let's give this a go. All right, so as we can see, the first one here, we've got smack. So this is smack your foe and repair turrets. So let's have a little look at that. So this is a, um, do bear in mind, this is all pretty close range. So this is a melee range weapon here. As you can see, I'm basically holding like a, a, a good old wrench there, a spanner, and I'm going to be whacking the enemy. So let's try this out. So it's pretty cool because you're putting vulnerability and cripple on them. So there's actually quite a lot of damage there. Look at that. Ooh, that's some some nice sounds that's making as well. It's got a little chain ability there as well, so it's it's smacking the enemies uh, and sticking all these uh, things on them. And it, it, the turret heal percent, so you're actually going to be healing your turrets at the same time. Hence why it's a toolkit. So that's pretty cool. Second ability: a box of nails. So scatter nails that bleed and cripple foes. So this be on a radius below you here. So you can throw those down. There you go. And look, that's crippling and bleeding the enemies as well. So that'll be all enemies in the area. So that's cool. Uh, next one you've got pry bar, so confuse your foe by smacking them with a pry bar, so basically crowbar them around the head, boom, stick the confusion on them as well, so that's really cool uh, there as well. Uh, next here you've got gear shield, so this blocks attacks for two seconds, literally, literally holding a big old gear there, so that's nice. And next up here you've got magnet, so pull your target to you, so you can do this from range 1200, so from quite far away, let's try back here. Ooh. There you go, pulls them to you, and then, yeah, because it's target golem, he'll disappear back over there. But that's pretty cool if you want to bring your enemies to you and hit them with some of your melee abilities, throw down some nails and stuff. So that's really cool. So I'll put that away there. The toolkit ability you get with that as well is throw wrench. That sounds like fun. So throw a wrench that returns to you, striking foes each way. So, bam. <laughs> hit him as well. So there you go, that does that. Uh, and also that sticks on vulnerability and cripple as well so it's stuck a couple of effects so that's, that's got some really cool effects on it as well so that's nice uh, the next utility skill is throw mine so this is a ground targeted gadget ability so throw out remote controlled landmine that damages knocks back and removes a bone from a uh, bone a boon from nearby foes you can see all the effects there so it's going to hit up to five enemies in explosion radius so if i stick this here he walks onto the mine Alright, oh okay. It's a detonation one. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention there. <laughs> so I have to wait for him to come around, look, I hide over here, and then when he walks into it. Oh! Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that knocked him back, did a big amount of damage there, and you can obviously detonate that to uh, explode and damage some enemies. And then the toolkit ability you get with that is minefield. So plant five mines around yourself. Uh, let me just try this out. Boom. There you go. Let's stick some mines down so that so if enemies walk on that it's going to explode them but I can form, detonate them there nice, so that's going to do a big amount of damage there so that's a pretty cool ability and then our third utility skill here is Elixir C it's got a 40 second cooldown so drink Elixir C converting all conditions into boons so you keep this on your bar and if you've got a bunch of conditions on you boom, drink it all those conditions are going to turn into boons so you're going to be turning the tables on your enemies there as well so that's a cool one Alright, so we've got some more utility skills here. 
Our first one is Elixir R. So drink Elixir R to refill your endurance and remove immobilizing effect. So it removes immobilize and obviously gives you a bit of endurance as well so you can roll around a bit more. So let's try that out. Boom. There we go. So that will re regen some of that endurance as well. And then um, our toolkit skill with it is Toss Elixir R to revive allies at a location. So if you've got some downed allies, throw this down on them. Well, as you can see that's going to revive the allies in that area so that's really cool as well. So next up we've got another engineering kit. So this is grenade kit. So equip the kit that replaces your weapon with grenade skills. There we go. So we've got five ground targeted grenade abilities. So oh look we've got a little belt of grenades there. That's cool. So let's get through this. So throw several grenades that explode. That's, that's the number one ability there. So ground target there. We can lob that down. You see it's got a little radius there. 900 range. So they've all got 900 range. So they can be done from pretty far range. So your second one's throw grenades that explode in a hail of shrapnel causing bleeding. So same sort of thing but this is going to bleed the enemy. There you go. It's got a bit of a cooldown there. Six seconds. This one's got a 10 second cooldown. It's flash grenade. So throw, enemy, uh, throw grenades that explode in blinding flash. So let's throw this at this guy. There you go. So that's the blindness on the enemy. Freeze grenade which has got a 20 second cooldown. So throw grenades that chill foes with frigid blasts. So go so that's putting the, the shield on the enemy as well so a lot of conditions going on here and then you have number five here which is 25 second cooldown for several grenades to explode in poisonous blast so I assume it's going to stick some poison on them there you go and all of these skills are going to uh, have uh, affect all enemies in the target area and put the associated condition on them so you can put that grenade kit away there and go back to your normal wef weapon skills and the uh, toolkit ability is grenade barrage so throw several grenades at once so if you haven't already thrown enough grenades there you go there's a few more just to show you there all right so now we've got bomb kit which is another engineering kit so equip the kit that replaces your weapon with bomb skills don't mind if i do As you can see holding a big old bomb here so number one ability. So this is, these are on a ra these are all radius abilities. So they they obviously are around you. So I need to show that here. So bomb set an explosive that damages nearby foes. So fuse time is one second. So after one second, that. <laughs> so that's the number one ability. So that's going to keep doing that there. Uh, <laughs> he's dead. Number two, firebomb set an explosive that burns nearby foes. This has got. 8, eight second cooldown so if I set that explosive there there you go boom you can see that's been burning there so that's a good one there number three concussion bomb so set an explosion that causes confusion to nearby enemies with a 16 second cooldown boom there. So stuck confusion on them there number four smoke bomb set a time charge that creates a cloud of smoke blinding nearby foes go so that's putting blindness on the enemy and number five set an explosive that explodes into a puddle of glue immobilizing foes caught in the explosion and cripples foes in the puddle so there you go there you go there you go that puts cripple on the enemy there and immobilizes foes as well so there you go I can stow that bomb kit away and our toolkit ability there for that is big old bomb set a time charge with a big blast that launches nearby foes with 20, 20 second cooldown so let's just give that a quick go Boom. Run away. Boom. <laughs> that was a big one. That's going to explode all the enemies in the air and knock them flying. So that's a really cool biddy there as well. So, okay. Let's move on. Alright, so we've got a few more utility skills here. So we've got a first look at our utility turret here. So this is rocket turret. So build a turret that fires rockets and this turret overcharges when it's first place. So when you first place it, it's going to overcharge, which is explosive rockets. So overcharge the turret to fire explosive rockets. And that's going to uh, knock down enemies uh, and has a rate of fire of 4 seconds, lasts for 4 seconds there as well. Um, so that's going to be shooting rockets at enemies as it goes along. So as you can see a radius of 240, it's got attack range of 1000 so it can be done from pretty long range and it can target up to 5 enemies. Uh, so when you're sick of that turret, so let me place that down first. Boom. That can shoot uh, things at the enemies here. So if I engage in a fight with this enemy here. Boom, there you go, it's going to start shooting rockets and it killed it there. When I'm done with that turret, or when I get to the end of combat, then um, I can just press my number 7, detonate it, explode it, do a bit of extra damage. 
and I just showed off the toolkit ability there which is rocket which is fire rocket out of your belt that explodes on impact so it's a little ground target ability that you can use to shoot an extra little rocket there so that's really cool that's that turret so here we've got another elixir skill so elixir B it's got 30 second cooldown let's drink elixir B to gain fury might retaliation and swiftness that's pretty simple there it's gonna stick all those buffs on you drink that all those buffs on you there so you can keep that on your bar and then when you need a little bit of extra oomph you can take that and that'll be make you a little bit powerful there the uh, um, toolkit ability gives you toss elixir B so toss elixir B at a target location granting stability and one of the following boons to allies fury might retaliation or swiftness so boom there you go stick some buffs down there on you and your allies there so a little extra thing this one here elixir U so drink elixir U gaining quickness stability and vigor okay so drink elixir U so let's give that a go also breaks stun as well and sticks those uh, buffs on you which is cool and then your little toolkit ability here toss elixir U so toss elixir U breaking stuns on allies and granting them super speed so break stuns and then grants you some nice super speed there to you and your allies as well so that's a cool one there alright so I'm not in combat so I can just switch to my next three here so dish 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 there you go so we've got elixir S so drink elixir S to shrink yourself recover from stun and evade attacks this has got 60 second cooldown and it's duration of 3 seconds if I use that, I'm tiny. You cannot use skills while transfer. That's really weird there. So that allows you to evade attacks. You can use it to get out of combat or get out of a sticky situation or something like that. But as you can see, it does have a big cooldown. So do bear that in mind. Uh, your toolkit ability there is Toss Elixir S Grind. Stealth to allies in the target area. There you go. Us and target allies all get a bit of stealth. So once again, allowing you to get out of a sticky situation. So we've got a couple of turrets here, so we've got rifle turret, so build a turret that shoots at foes and when he first places it overcharges which does automatic fire so it's going to uh, do a nice little rate of fire increase there, puts a bit of vulnerability on the enemies. So if I stick that turret down here, okay so if I attack this enemy, so I'll use my toolkit ability here, which is fire a bullet out of my belt. So boom, and as you can see, the turret then attacks. So that's going to continuously attack enemies in the area when you're in combat, so that's cool. Um, so I can obviously detonate that rifle turret when I'm done with it as well. So boom, that's going to explode and damage some enemies. I've got another turret here, so flame turret. Put that down. And that's going to shoot some flames out there, as you can see. Awesome. So that's going to, as you can see, do that. I can detonate it. So as you can see, that that um, the flame turret just burns enemies. So only got a, a 500 range, so it's relatively close range. So don't try doing that from too far away. So place that relatively close to the enemy. And then your tool belt ability on this is throw napalm. So it's got 25 second cooldown, it's throw a ball of napalm that explodes on impact, burning foes around target location. So, boom, there you go, so just a bit of extra burn in there, so everyone in that area is going to be set on fire. So that's just cool as well. Alright, so we've got our last two utility skills here, uh, which is a couple of turrets. So your last turrets here, you've got net turret, which builds a net turret that immobilizes nearby foes, and when you first place it, um, your turret fires an electrified net that mobilizes and stuns. So if I stick that down here, all right. Let me just stick a weapon on, so I can just get into combat. So once I get into combat, you see that fires nets, electrified net originally, and then after that, just some some normal nets to uh, immobilize foes. So that's pretty cool there. Um, and I can there you go. It just does that periodically. And then I can bomb detonate that to explode it as well. So every 10 seconds it, it shoots one of those nets to immobilize enemies. So bear that in mind, it's quite slow. And here you get net attack. So fire a net from your belt to immobilize foes. That's your little extra one there. A little bit of extra immobilization you can put on the enemy there. And then your final utility skill is Thumper Turret. So build a high health Thumper Turret that damages nearby foes. This turret overcharges when it's first place. So if I stick that down. 
guy that knocks them down, which is really cool there. <laughs> okay, so that, look at that. So that's immobilizing the foes, bumping every, uh, uh, sorry, there you go. So I can detonate that and then just have a little look there. So every three seconds um, that thumps and damages nearby foes there and puts cripple on the enemy at the same time. So it's quite a good one there for, for obviously mate, slowing all the enemies down around it. So you can place that right in the middle and that's going to, every three seconds, that's going to be crippling them. So that's really cool as well there. So that is, oh wait, just one more there. So just look at the rumble there, which is the, um, what do you want to call it? The toolkit skill. So release a shockwave of neutral force to damage nearby foes. Boom. There you go. So just a little bit of extra damage there. So that is now all of the utility skills there for the engineer. That took a little while, but that's all of them, so that's really cool. So now I just want to have a little look at the elite skills. All right, so now I want to have a look at the elite skills for the engineer. So let's have a look. So the first one we've got is Supply Crate. This is an elite turret ability, so let's try this out. So this requests a supply drop of turrets, and turrets overcharge when the first drop. So this is going to um, basically drop a bunch of turrets on the ground, probably a mixture of the turrets that you can use there in your utilities. Uh, and then you can press it again to detonate all the turrets at the same time, uh, you can do it at the end of the fight, to obviously do a big amount of damage to the enemies around you. Has got 120 second cooldown, but you sort of expect that. This is really something that's going to change the, um, you know, the complexion of a fight. So if you've got an, a big fight going on in an area, you can place this down. So see and boom it's got a bunch of turrets there so if I start attacking that enemy there it shoots a flame turret so I think it's like a random selection there so you've got a flame turret and a healing turret there and then you've got a little net turret over here as well so I think it could be like sort of like a random selection of turrets it's going to put down and then at any time you could just boom there you go as you can see it's killing everyone so that's a really powerful skill there so you definitely want to think about putting that one into your build. And then obviously you've got a, a little elite, extra elite thing here for your tool belt. So med pack drop. Got a 50 second cooldown. Cool down a supply drop of med packs into a target area. Okay, so just stick that here. There you go. So these med packs, your enemy uh, sorry, your allies can sort of run over them and heal them uh, and yourself as well. So that's a nice little, so you've got a nice damage thing there, but you can also heal there as well. So that's really cool. All right, so the next elite skill I wanted to show you is an, uh, is an elite elixir skill. So this is called Elixir X and has a 105 second cooldown. You drink Elixir X to become a rampaging brute or whirling tornado. So this will give you either one of two effects, tornado or rampage. And this is going to replace all of your weapon skills here with a new one obviously depending on which one you get and you can go around and do a bunch of damage so let's have a little look see which one we get all right so we're a tornado and we've got electrified tornado dust tornado debris tornado elemental requiem and dust charge and i'll uh, i'll let you have a look at these skills rather than going into them because oh so obviously it doesn't let you uh do it for a very long time so obviously if you um have a look, try that out, you'll and you know, you'll get the tornado and a juggernaut probably fifty percent of the time each. And then you can just have a look at the skills and see, you know, see what they do because you don't have a lot of time there to look at them. But I'll quickly show you the um uh, the tool belt ability to go to it as well. So toss elixir X. It's got a ninety second cooldown. The toss your elixir um transforming enemies at the location into mowers. Alright. <laughs> okay literally turned them into mower birds that was pretty awesome I will give you that so that might be something that you want to do there even for sort of toolkit ability but yeah have a little look to see to try that out and have a look at the skills for yourself there okay so the third and final elite skill that you can use with the engineer is the uh, elite mortar kit so this is actually an elite engineering kit so this is going to replace our weapon skills so if we equip this there we go like I said you, you know this is pretty cool because it doesn't have a certain amount of time you can uh, wh whack it out whenever you want it just obviously depends on these new weapon skill cooldowns here but I'm going to go through show you all of these so these are all ground target abilities as you can see so the first one is mortar shot so launch an explosive round from your mortar damaging foes in the target area so it's pretty straightforward there so boom 
There you go, so that's going to do a bit of damage there. Not too much by the looks of it. That's just a little bit of damage there, it's only number one. Okay, so um, your second one, poison gas shell. So it's got a 10 second cooldown. Launch a mortar round that spreads poisonous gas in an area. So let's have a little look at this. So that's going to poison everyone in that area. Look, you're stacking up the poison there. So that one's going to do a bit more damage. So that's going to be doing that to everyone in the area. So that's really cool. Endothermic shell. So it's got a 15 second cooldown. So launch a mortar round that chills foes in the area. So it seems like you can drop all these mortars on people. Showing different effects. There you go, chilling them, so it's going to slow them right down there. Uh, here you've got flash cell shell, which has a 20 second cooldown, and it's launch a phosphorus mortar round that burns brightly at impact point. Okay, hopefully it does more than just burn in brightness. There you go, so it blinds the enemies there, as you can see, so it's going to blind all of them, so the next attack misses for them. And then the fifth one here, uh, launch a mortar round that heals allies in the target area, elixir shell. So 30 second cooldown can uh, target allies in the area so obviously you want to stick this on top of yourself and your allies and that's going to put a nice heal on all of you and your allies there so that's pretty cool so as long as you're in this radius for those um, is it five seconds and that's going to heal them so that's really awesome there but just to demonstrate here if I just rain down some mortars on this guy here you go sticking a bunch of effects on him and obviously everyone in the area is going to be affected and then my number five skill will be a nice little heal skill to go with it as well so uh, just finally show off the um, the tall belt ability for this as well, so orbital strike. This is a 20 second cooldown, this is cooldown energy from the sky to blast an area. So this is obviously, uh, can be done from 1500 range from really far away. And everyone in a radius up to 5 enemies is going to take some damage, so let's just try this out here. Alright, oh, yeah that's a really cool animation there and does a nice little uh, extra bit of damage there and it's unblockable. So that's a, a pretty cool uh, elite skill there and obviously if I press this I'll put that away and then I can whack it out again at any time so that's really cool. Alright so that is all of the elite skills for the engineer so the next thing I want to have a look at are the uh, engineer's basic profession, profession mechanics. Alright, so now I want to look at the unique profession mechanics for the Engineer. So you've probably already noticed through this video that the Engineer is a really unique class and has a lot of things that you've never seen, not only in Guild Wars 2 but probably any other MMO. So I've been through a lot of the mechanics as I've been showing you the other things, like obviously the main thing here is your F1 to F5, your tool belt. So just to reiterate, your tool belt here is five abilities that you can use separate from all these abilities that so have their own cooldowns and effects and everything and they are defined by these five abilities here. So if I swap out my healing skill, I'm swapping my F1. If I swap out my 7, I'm changing my F2, and so on, as you can see. So it just gives you a whole uh, another five abilities there, so obviously instead of having the weapon sword, which you don't actually have available as the engineer, you have this extra little weapon set there, so that's the reason why. Um, I also showed you a few other things that they have, like for example, you know, they've got engineering kits, which as we said adds a whole new extra skill and there's a good few of them so you could have you know a couple of engineering kits here on your bar which would give you you know 10 15 more skills uh, to choose from there so obviously be careful not to overload yourself uh, and have too many skills to use because you know you never get to use them all and it'd be a bit ridiculous so. and then obviously you've got turrets which we looked at which who doesn't want to put down a turret and who's ever seen that in an MMO, like you've probably seen similar sort of things playing around totems and stuff like that, but an actual turret and then making them explode that's really cool. And then a grenade kit, like a grenade kit, like I can actually do this and just start lobbing grenades that have different condition effects for each individual one. I mean. Who's ever seen anything like that? So, I mean, talk about the unique profession mechanics. They're literally, um, the engineer, everything about it is unique. So, it's not really something you would have seen before. So, I think we've been through pretty much all of this as the video has gone on. So, there's not really that much else for me to speak about here. You know, you've got a couple of unique types of skills as well, like gadgets and um, obviously the elixirs as well. You can med kits and stuff like that. So these are all things that um, you know are different from other ones. So you probably need to spend a little bit of time learning the mechanics for the engineer before you actually start wading in. 
um, because there's quite a lot of le to learn and a lot of different skills, especially if you're going with all of these engineering kits. So that's all of the um, the unique profession mechanics for the engineer. So the next thing I wanted to look at was the actual core specializations for the engineer. And we're going to go through each individual trait. All right, so now I'm going to have a look at the specializations for the engineer and each individual trait within them just to see how that makes your build even better. So here we've got five core specializations and we're going to look at all of them. So the first one is explosives. So the first ability on this is explosive entrance. So your first attack when entering combat explodes, dealing damage to nearby foes. This ability refreshes after a dodge roll. So there you go, your first attack explodes, dealing extra damage to nearby enemies, going to put vulnerability on the enemy there as well. And obviously that's, um, and when you dodge roll you're going to refresh that so the next attack will explode again. So your first choice is here, you've got Grenadier. So increase the throw velocity and blast radius of grenades. Using a healing skill, cast lesser grenade barrage. A lesser grenade barrage throws several grenades at once. So this, uh, you know, buffs your, your grenades. So if you've, you're using the grenade engineering kit, that's going to be pretty good because that's going to make those even better. Next you've got short fuse. So gain fury when you hit a foe with an explosion. So once again, it's going to make those grenades. And uh, if you've got using the bomb kit, that's going to make those even better. So you've got glass cannon. So damage increases when above the threshold. So when your health is above 75%, you're going to get 7% extra damage. So here you've got still packed powder. So explosions cause vulnerability. So any explosions you cause, uh, they're going to also put vulnerability on the enemies as well. So it makes it even better. So you know if you're using any types of explosives as part of your build, then this is definitely going to be the um, the specialization for you. Uh, so here you've got aim assisted rocket. So critical hits launch a missile at your target. After enough missiles have been fired, an orbital strike is called instead. Uh, so this this fires a seeking rocket at your foe. Um, so that's obviously whenever you critically hit. So if you've got a lot of precision in your build with high crit chance, then you're probably going to want to put that on there. So explosive temper. So explosions grant stacking ferocity when they hit. So maximum stacks of 10. Uh, so there you go, explosive temper plus 20 ferocity. So uh, that's just going to buff your explosions. And blast shield. Explosive entrance grants barrier. So gain vitality based on a percentage of your power. So it's two different things there. So, so you're going to gain health based on your power. So it's going to give you quite a lot of health there. And then also uh, explosive entrance grants barrier. And explosive entrance was that thing we spoke about back there. So shaped charge. So deal more damage for each stack of vulnerability in your target. So this links in with that one. So explosions cause vulnerability. And then you're doing even more damage to vulnerable targets. So this all links together. Okay, here you've got flashbang. So explosive entrance inflicts blindness when it hits. Additionally, it dazes foes above the health threshold. So threshold health threshold is 90%, so just makes your explosive entrance better. Uh, shrapnel, so explosions have a chance to cripple and cause bleeding on hit. So there you go, a couple of extra um, uh, conditions there. 33% chance of those when you hit with an explosion. And then big boomer. So deal more damage against foes with a lower health percentage than you. Hitting with an explosion heals you over a few seconds. Okay, so the second specialization we're going to look at is alchemy. Right, so straight away here you've got hidden flask. So drink a lesser elixir B when struck while below the health threshold. So if someone hits you when you're below 75% health, you're going to quaff an elixir, gaining boots, so it's going to stick a bunch of boons on you, so that's cool there. As you can see, this um, this specialization here is going to be around your elixir, so if you're integrating a lot of elixirs into your build, this may be the specialization for you. So invigorate and speed. So when you gain swiftness, you also gain bigger. That's quite obvious there. And you've got protection injection. So gain protection when you are disabled. So if anyone uses any of those listed things against you, you're going to get protection for three and a quarter seconds, so that's going to take away a third of your income and damage. So health insurance. So increase your income and healing effectiveness. Gain increased healing to others while using a med kit. So it's going to make your med kit even better. Okay, so transmute. So drink a lesser elixir C when you reach a threshold of conditions affecting you. So once you reach two conditions on you, you'll quaff an elixir converting conditions into boons. So that'd be good. 
So you've got Comeback Cure. So grant regeneration when you remove a condition from an ally. So whenever you do condition removal there, look, you've got regen, so you're going to make their health come back even quicker. Here you've got Emergency Elixir. So drink an Elixir E when you're struck while below the health threshold. So below 33% health, so when you're pretty low on health, if someone hits you, you're going to drink Elixir E, which is gain barrier and protection. So that's going to help keep you alive in time for you to maybe like use your heal skill or, or get out of combat. So here you've got Backpack Regenerator. So recover health every second when using an engineering kit. So this just means that you know if you're in an engineering kit, so you like use your flamethrower, you're going to be getting healing every second. So that's cool. Compounding Chemicals. So heal yourself when you grant yourself a boon, gain increased concentration. So whenever you give yourself a boon, you're going to uh, heal yourself, and then you'll also get some extra concentration, just a standard there as well. Here you've got HGH, so elixirs gain reduced recharge and increased durations, and grant might. So there you go, duration increase 20%, re recharge reduction 20% on your elixir skills, and then also they're going to grant might there, so it's going to make your uh, power, give you even more power there. Here you've got purity of purpose. So when you would cleanse a condition from an ally, convert it into a boon instead. So that just makes your uh, condition cleanse even better. So you're going to be given them boons instead of just getting rid of the condition. And you've got Iron Blooded. So reduce physical and condition damage for each boon you have. Uh, there you go. So there you go. Minus income and damage, minus income and condition damage for every boon you have there. So the next one is Firearm. So I assume this is going to make your... Uh, rifles and pistols in bats. Let's have a look at this. The sharpshooter. So critical hits have a chance to cause bleeding. So 33% uh, chance on critical hit there to give bleeding. So you know if you've got high crit chance that will be really effective for you. Chemical rounds. So gain condition damage. Your pistol skills gain increased condition duration. So there you go. So obviously the pistol skills as we looked at uh, put a lot of conditions on the enemy. So you can increase the duration of that and increase your condition damage with the pistol as well. Sanguine Array. So gain might when you inflict bleeding on a foe. So whenever you're bleeding enemies you're also going to uh, get might as well. Which is good. High Calibre. So you have an increased critical hit chance against foes within the range threshold. So anyone within a 300 range, you're going to get 15% extra crit chance there. Hermatic Focus. You have increased chance to critically strike against bleeding foes. So a lot of the effects, obviously, um, as part of these, uh, puts bleeding on them. So whenever they've got bleeding on them, you've got 10% extra critical chance as well. Pinpoint Distribution. So grant increased condition damage to nearby allies. Uh, so 100 condition damage extra there, uh, interval of 3 seconds, a radius of 600 around you. Thermal vision, so gain expertise and increase your outgoing condition damage when you inflict burning. So extra 5% condition damage there and plus 60 expertise. No scope, critical hits on foes within the range threshold have a chance to grant fury. Fury grants you ferocity. So the uh, range threshold is 300 there, so um, when you critically hit foes within the range threshold, you're going to grant fury, so that's pretty cool. Serrated steel, so bleeding you inflict gains increased duration, so that's going to make your bleeding even better by making it last longer, therefore doing more damage. Uh, here you've got Juggernaut, so gain might and stability while wielding a flamethrower. Might applied to you gains increased duration. So there you go, so it's going to make you uh, even better, so give you might and stability whenever you have a flamethrower equipped it. So if you're using that engineering kit, then you're going to want to choose that option. So you've got modified ammunition. So deal increased damage for each condition on your foe. So 2% increased damage for each condition. And here you've got incendiary powder. So burning you inflict lasts longer, and your critical hits inflict burning. So um, Basically, that buffs your burning, make it even better. So there, you know, that might help with the flamethrower and stuff like that as well. So it seems like that specialisation that focuses a lot on conditions like bleeding and burning and stuff like that, uh, and also making your pistols better. So next up, you've got tools. So here, so optimised activation. So using tool belt skills grants vigour. So tool belt skills, just to remind you of any of these ones here. So whenever you use any of those F1 to F5 skills, you're going to give yourself a vigour buff as well. 
So here you've got static discharge. So discharge a bolt of lightning whenever you use a tool belt skill. So once again, any of those F1 to F5 abilities, you're going to do static discharge, which hits multiple foes with arcs of chain lightning. And critical hits with this ability deal increased damage. So reactive lenses. So activate lesser utility goggles when blinded or disabled. So if anyone blinds you or uses any of those disability effects on you, you're going to break out of stun and gain resistance and clear your blindness. So power wrench. So reduces recharge of your toolkit skills. So reduce the recharge of your elite skill when you dodge. So um, recharge reduction of 20% there on your toolkit skills and elite recharge reduction of one second every time you dodge. That's pretty cool. So mechanized deployment. So your tool belt skills gain reduced recharge. So again there, tool belt skills uh, recharge is gonna go down by 15%. That's good. Uh, here you've got streamlined kit. So equipping an engineering kit creates an attack or spell and grants you swiftness. So fire shield there, activate a fire shield that burns enemies who strike you, grant might for each burn applied, so that's just going to stick that on you there. So that depends on uh, which one, as you can right click there to have a look at each one for each of the different engineering kits. So here you've got lock on, so striking a stealthed foe triggers invisible analysis, disabling a foe triggers controlled analysis. And if you right click there you can go between those two uh, abilities there, so you can have a better look. Here you've got takedown round. So striking a foe above the health threshold places a delayed explosion charge on them. So you hit anyone above 50% health, you're going to be putting a delayed explosive charge on them. So drop a delayed explosive pack at your foe's location, which will damage all enemies in a radius. So that's cool. Here you've got excessive energy. So deal more damage while under the effects of vigor. So one, you've got vigor on you, and then you're going to get 10% increased damage got kinetic battery so gain kinetic charges when you use a tool belt skill at maximum charges gain a burst of speed so as you can see there you build up charges and then you'll get quickness and super speed there when that stacks up here you've got adrenal implant so um, endurance regeneration is increased so your endurance bar here just you know for your dodge roll and everything that is increased by, well, the regen of it is increased by 50%, so that's quite significant. You can roll around a lot more. And here you've got Gadgeteer. So gadget skills are more powerful and have reduced recharge. So obviously if you've got any of those gadget skills as part of your, uh, your setup down here, then that's going to um, have reduced recharge. And it's going to make it more powerful as well. And you can right click there to see how it changes each of the gadget skills. Okay, so the final specialization we want to look at is Inventions. So first of all we've got Cleansing Synergy. So using a heal skill triggers a cleansing pulse around you. So uh, cleanse a condition from nearby allies anytime you use a heal skill. Here you've got Overshield, so shield skills gain reduced recharge and grant protection to nearby allies. Protection on you, gain increased damage reduction there. So it tells you about that there. So it seems like this specialization is more of a support role. Automated medical response. So heal skills are recharged when you're struck while below the health threshold. So if you're below 25% health, um, if you're struck below them, they're going to recharge your healing skills. So that's cool. Help you stay alive. Here you've got auto defense bomb dispenser. But drop a smoke bomb when you're disabled. So whenever anyone uses one of those disability effects on you, you're going to drop a smoke bomb, so set a time charge that creates a cloud of smoke blinding nearby foes. Alright, so reconstruction enclosure. So grant protection to nearby allies when you use a heal skill. So once again, increasing uh, your healing, so well, basically adding buffs on enemies whenever you're healing, so it makes it even better. So making you even better at support. Experimental turrets. So turrets create a reflective barrier when built and grant boons to allies around them on a regular interval. So there you go, got a reflective shield for four seconds when you put down the turret and it shows you there for each different turret there is a different uh, boon that it puts on allies. So that's going to be really cool. If you've got a lot of turrets in your build, you're going to want to go with that. So soothing detonation. So heal nearby allies when you use a tool belt skill. So whenever you use any of those F1 to F5, Bam, that's going to get healing on all your allies at the same time as well. 
here mecha legs so movement speed is increased cripple skill sorry cripple chill and immobilize duration are reduced so your movement speed is increased by 25% so that's pretty awesome makes getting around easier and condition duration reduction so uh, all of these uh, things that are put on you that's going to decrease the duration of them energy amplifier so your healing power is increased while you have regeneration so whenever you have regeneration on you you're going to have plus 250 healing power here you've got anti-corrosion plating so when you grant protection to an ally cleanse conditions from them so an extra little thing there so bunker down create a proximity mine and med kits at your location when you critically hit with an attack so you can see uh, detonates when enemies draw near and then you've got bandage there so that you can right click to have a look at those abilities that it puts down there and finally you have medical dispersion field so percentage of healing you apply to yourself is shared with nearby allies so healing 25% um, so 25% of your healing is shared with um, up to 5 allies within a radius of 362 so that makes your support even better okay so um, that's all of the specializations and as, as normal you can obviously have three of those active at any one time so that's really cool so do have a look into those uh, to make your build even better so uh, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to throw together a quick little engineer build and do a combat demonstration for you guys so you can see what it looks like when it all comes together okay so I've thrown together a quick engineer build here so our one weapon that we can use here is the dual pistol so we'll be trying those out and we've got a nice mixture of skills here we've got an elixir healing skill and you, uh, for our utilities we've got a gadget a turret and an engineering kit to show off as well as the uh, the big turret supply crate so we can drop that down and then we'll have a look at these uh, uh, tool belt skills as well so let's have a look Alright, okay, so that's just a quick demonstration of what the engineer can do and obviously there's loads of different combinations that you can choose to make that even cooler. Alright, so I think that pretty much covers everything for the engineer. Uh, so if you have any more questions about it, then obviously just uh, comment on the video and I'll get back to you. So um, if you want to watch a video on any other classes or elite specializations, then check out my playlist for it because I'm doing one on all of the classes and all of the elite specs and I've done a lot of them already. Um, and if you want to watch a video that shows all of the elite specs and classes in one video then I've done that as well and you can give that a watch. So thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe to be kept up to date, see you later.